What's up everybody? Welcome to Vintage Kicks Gallery and I'm your host Broken Famous. So this is long overdue. Today we're going to examine how the 2020 Jordan 1 that's replicating the 85 style compares to an actual 85. We have the uh, pleasure of a dual feature here. So what do we have? We have a 1985 Chicago and we have the 2020 for the New Beginnings pack. So let's get into it. All right, let's talk about what details make an 85 so special. The first thing that people generally notice about an 85 is the exaggerated swoosh here. See how big and exaggerated that is? They changed that on the recent retros and made it much smaller. If you notice the 85 New Beginnings pack, it has this uh, the oversized large exaggerated check again. Second thing that, that always comes up when we talk about 85s is the high tongue tag. So this one's a little compressed, it's hard to see, but if you notice the tongue, it actually raises above the collar. And that's something, again, the retros went uh, away from and they made a shorter tongue. But if we take a look here, again, Jordan nailed it. So let's talk about the main thing that people always gripe about with the heel of the shoe. Swap these over, take a look. Now keep in mind, this is a little larger of a shoe. So if it was the same size, I think it would be 100% accurate. So if you take a look at the cuts, the shape, the main thing we're looking at is the angle. No longer does this jet forward and over, it's a straight up and down angle, and that's what people have been wanting and griping on for years. Another detail that Jordan and Nike could have easily overlooked is the size, label, and factory production code stamp. Now, if you remember back to the 2016 bread, they put their own modern version of this on the side. And that's why you had those oversized, you know, big numbers. If you rewind the clock a little bit back to the band one, uh, that had the October 14th, uh, 1985 date in it, which was actually incorrect. And one of the reasons that led to those going to the outlets as B grades. What we have here is the sizing, the factory production date, those are the months, and then the factory code. So both of these shoes have it, and they're separated 2019 to 1985. Now, let's talk about how they achieved this shape and why it was so difficult. So one of the things about these shoes that you won't notice unless you've owned 85s or really studied them is that the midsole and outsole is actually a different shape. You'll notice that it jets out right here. This is called a four foot stabilizer. And this is the area here where on a 1985, you get a bump. So if you can see that on both these shoes, it jets out and on a modern one, it would be just completely straight. If we look here on the 2020, they replicated that exactly. There are a couple things that they did change on these. The first and main thing that everybody's commented on to me is asking about the toe box. If you notice the toe box on the 2020 looks a little bit more spacious. It is. So my theory on this is that Jordan Brand and Nike wanted to keep the sizing consistent for these retros. If you own 85s or you've worn 85s, you know that they fit small. Almost a full size, but a full half size for sure. So in order to keep the sizing consistent, Jordan Brand gave us a little bit more room in the toe box area. But don't worry, because my experience with 85s is the newer they are, the more this bubble is apparent, and the more you wear them, the sleeker they, they become. So I think these will end up looking pretty dang close. All right, another thing that's slightly different, and again, this is very, very a minute detail that only the 0.1% uh, the of diehard vintage collectors would ever even notice. Um, let alone would anybody care about it, but the laces have changed. So 1985 laces are a little bit skinnier. They have a noticeable weave to them and they appear to be made out of cotton. They don't really have a sheen to them. So Jordan Brand gave us what I believe to be cotton laces. They got that right. But you'll notice that they fall more in line with the retro style of being just a little bit wider and without that noticeable pattern. So take a look at that and see if you can notice it. Probably not. Anybody that's uh, you know standing up three feet away or whatever would never notice that, but I thought it's worth mentioning. Now let's talk about my favorite thing they went back to, the Wings logo. For this, it's important for us to grab the retro again. Now, 
Do you notice anything different here? The embossing on this matches the 1985. The embossing on this does not. It looks like it's just stamped or silk screened on there. And it's actually reversed. So you notice where these pop up, these indent. Where these indent, these pop up. This homage to the 85 style and hopefully the way they do all these 85 retros from now on has a lot more depth to it. And you really notice that on foot. You don't get that shine and sheen away from it like you do on the uh, retros from the previous years. And it gives it an almost three dimensional look. It's very cool. Um, that's something that I don't know why they ever changed, but it's always bugged me. And like I said, that's one of my favorite features. One more small difference we have, and this is a purposeful change uh, that Nike and Jordan did in my opinion, is they changed the material of the check for the 2020. And the check is the swoosh. So why would they change that? On the 1985, believe it or not, this is a plasticky vinyl material. It has a tendency of drying out and cracking over time. It doesn't fit the overall construction of the shoe. If we look at the 2020, we'll notice that it's a very smooth cut leather. So this is an improvement on the 85. I think most people are gonna be okay with this because the 1985 checks just don't hold up under heavy use, especially over time. They develop these hairline cracks and they start fraying like this. They're just not up to the, the standard of construction of the rest of the shoe. All right, next thing we're gonna cover is something that most people won't care about, most people will never see, but it's an interesting uh, detail that Jordan Brand did not overlook. And that is the board lasting and insole style. So what we have here are insoles from a 1985 Jordan 1, the 2020 Jordan 1 New Beginnings, a 1984 sample pair, thanks to the homie Yo That's Fire, and then a traditional retro Jordan 1 insole. And what you'll notice is that the 85 and the 2020 are the exact same. So what is board lasting? Take a look at the base of the shoe. Notice how that's brown? That's actually a piece of cardboard or board that stays at the bottom of the shoe and acts as a rigid base. Jordan Brand changed this in the retros and went to a modern foam design. That's why if you look at the 2020 or a 1985 insole, you'll notice that the foam is very rigid and adds a lot of support. When you compare that to the modern retro style, which is just a uh, piece of memory foam that's very thin and uh, very flexible, you're gonna notice that this is gonna have a more rigid construction. Can you feel it on foot? That's a good question. So to me, I really can't. I noticed that the 2020, just like the 85s, has a bit more of a firm structure at the base. But once you wear it for a few minutes, you're not gonna notice. It's not gonna be a deal breaker on comfort. As you can see, they're pretty close. So uh, I like what Jordan did. This is a detail that again, they, it was more of a bonus to the vintage collectors. They easily could have overlooked this and skipped it. But the fact that they did this and they replicated similar to uh, the PE sample pair that uh, Channel Chris has, um, I love that kind of stuff. Also, you're gonna notice that the color code is white, red, and black. And we have another video coming up on that. All right, let's talk quality. Did the 2020 improve quality of leather? Did it match the 1985 or is it a step backwards? Now, if you listen to what people say online, it's absolute trash, but that's incorrect. This is actually grained leather. It's real leather. It's not that tumbled artificial stuff that we've gotten on the uh, recent releases. I have no doubts that these are going to age beautifully. If you take a look at the close-ups, you'll see that there's rough, raw cut edges, all the stuff that makes a signature 85 look the way that it does. Now, is it true 85 quality? Unfortunately, no. No shoe's ever going to be. The standards of the materials have just diminished. So how close is it? I would say we're 80% there, to be honest. If this cut was just a little bit thicker, and I'm talking a minute difference, we're talking a fraction of a millimeter here, you would have a very hard time differentiating these two leather types. So as far as construction goes, Jordan really did it with these. Anybody that says these are not good quality, don't listen to them. They don't have them in hand. The tags. 
These are hang tags that hang on the Jordan 1s. They were originally included in the 1985 sets. Keep in mind this is 35 years old, it's faded, but the front is the same. The back, again, is the same. The inside, they changed the word air wedge to air sole. That's it. That's the only change you'll find on here. Much like with the Airship, they added the Jumpman instead of the Nike logo. They've made that little change to go with the modern standards of the brand. So guys, I think that just about covers it. Let me know if you have any additional questions or uh, just leave me a comment if I missed anything. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention is we have some videos upcoming. We have a unboxing from Japan where we have a bunch of vintage shoes that were purchased in Japan auctions uh, coming. We're gonna unbox them and we're gonna let you vote on which shoe I restore first. That's gonna be fun. Uh, we have some more reviews and a buyer's guide for buying a 1985 Jordan 1. And we'll do some on feet and some fit videos that show you what some of these old vintage uh, uh, 1985 and through 1987 shoes uh, look like on feet. Not many people wear these and uh, we're pretty happy to show that off. So if you haven't already seen, we wore both of these on feet together, um, which was kind of nice because it was shoes separated by about 35 years together for the first time. All in all, the quality is a solid 95%. Jordan listened to what people were griping about and they addressed that. They even went above and beyond. So I'm very impressed. I can't wait to see what the next colorways look like. And uh, will I be wearing my 85s less? You never know. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, you're okay. Now I got it.